Hey guys, so I am at my home, uh, in my office here, and I have the cylinder head for the Juratec. Now, I didn't film this, but uh, I did actually strip it down again uh, because I noticed a little bit of corrosion on uh, some of the valve seats because the cylinder head has been sitting on a shelf for quite a bit of time. So I thought, you know what, do it properly, pull the springs out, drop the valves out, get the thing looking uh, as, as good as it can be before we start putting it back together. So I'm going to go through um, what I'm doing right now, which is a little bit of valve lapping, uh, as well as um, installation of, uh, of the camshafts, um, the followers obviously before the camshafts, springs, all the rest of it. So we're going to start rebuilding this head back up. I know I've showed some of this before, but uh, I think might as well do it properly uh, and make sure I, uh, I do it the way I want to do it. I had those second thoughts about how to go about it. and. Um, you know, want to make sure I do it the right way. I have that corrosion on there that I just want to get rid of. Make sure the, the valves are seating really nicely. There's good compression and uh, away we go. Okay, so the uh, reason I'm doing this, I'll try and get a little bit closer up here, is uh, obviously a brand new cylinder head with new valves, but they've been sitting on the shelf of some shop for a long time. And you can see on this valve in particular, let's get it in focus. So I'm actually let's zoom in and get it in focus. Uh, corrosion on the top of it, which uh, obviously is not ideal, not the end of the world. The valve seats do have some corrosion in them too, so that one does. The one we've just done uh, doesn't so much. Let's see if we can just get that in focus here. So that one now we've ground away, made nice and smooth. This one, a little bit of corrosion. Most of them are okay, a little bit of corrosion, a little bit of corrosion. There is actually one on the end here, which is quite bad. So those are the valve seats. They are steel inserts, the valve seats, as opposed to aluminum, which the rest of the head is. So I want to make those seats where they meet the valves as smooth as possible. And with it having the corrosion, there will be some pitting. So we're going to get rid of that pitting. That was my reasoning for pulling this apart again, this cylinder head. And uh, I'm really going at it properly. Alright guys, I am actually at my desk where I normally would uh, work, uh, but got the cylinder head here, turned over. When I did strip this apart, I arranged uh, the valves as so, um, front, back of the cylinder head with valves in their sequence, just because I wanted them to go back into the head the same way that I pulled them apart. So. We're going to start going through the um, lapping of these valves. Everything else is apart on the cylinder head. Uh, I do have our suction cups, uh, which will help with uh, the, the lapping as we put them uh, into each of the seats. Uh, here we go. Okay, I have this tub of valve grinding compound. So we're going to, uh, it's kind of gray in color. Obviously it's very gritty. We're gonna um, use, I'm just gonna leave that on there for just a sec, and I've got a Q-tip. Uh, we're gonna get a little bit onto the top of the Q-tip, like so. And then we have the little valve here, and we're gonna just go around the edge of the valve. I don't know if you can see that there. Go around the edge of the valve with the lapping compound to relatively evenly disperse it. It doesn't need to be perfect because it's going to be sort of spinning in place. That's that. Put that to the side. And then slide this in here. Hopefully you can see it there. All the way down. And then I'll sort of zoom in here. If I can. Where's my uh, lock? And then we're just going to basically twist it, spin it, put a little bit of pressure on it. And as you can sort of hear it, it pushes out some of the sand, crushes some of the sand down, or whatever it is, rubbing compound down. 
until until you don't hear it anymore. And then we'll just check, see how we're looking. And it will have, uh, yeah, lapped around the edges a little bit. It'll allow it to seat a little bit nicer. So we're gonna go around and do that for all of these valves. All right, so we're on the last valve for the job here. Um, what I forgot to mention is um, that the shaft for each of the valves should be lubricated, which uh, I have been doing through the entire cylinder head. I didn't mention it before, but uh, there's a grinding compound around the seat area, and then um, definitely lubricate with uh, uh, a little bit of either assembly lube or um, engine oil will do the trick for you as well. Uh, so we'll get this one finished up and then uh, show you what we've done. So you can sort of see now, even the roughest of the valve seats with the corrosion has a nice seat for the valve now, cleaned up. Um, and as we go across all of the uh, valves, they're looking really quite tidy. Obviously very clean and should make good seals. So what I've done is um, I'm going through now with some Q-tips. Um, and cleaning through each of the valve guides. Now, there's obviously some oil in there from the valves. Uh, I don't want any lapping compound, obviously, to get in there whatsoever, which I've been very careful about. But I just want to clean out as much of the debris, if there's anything in that valve guide, as possible. So, I'm just going in and out, and you'll catch sometimes, as you did with that one, just a little bit of dirt from, uh, from me, obviously going through and cleaning the engine. So, get as much of that out as possible. So what I should also mention, while I had the cylinder head off and I disassembled the cylinder head, I went in, and you may already see it, but I've done some polishing and a little bit of porting of the uh, cylinder head. So the intake and exhaust channels uh, have been ported and polished. Only ported close to the entrance where it mates with the manifolds um, because uh, I needed them to match up, I didn't want any big lips there. And then while I was in there, uh, I can, you can sort of see it's shiny, reflective. Uh, I did do a little bit of polishing. I didn't take much material away, but um, that is that. So, uh, the cylinder head now is going to start to become reassembled. We are ready um, to start putting this uh, valve train back together. Um, firstly, everything's been cleaned again. I made sure that uh, there's no dust, metal particles, really anything around the surface of this uh, cylinder head. And we have all of the valve guides lined up, ready to push back into place. And then valves come in, springs go on, uh, followers go on, camshafts go in. So uh, we'll start to put this all back together now. So all of the valve seals, as you can see, uh, green on the intake side, dark on the exhaust side, have all been installed. Let's show you in there. So there's the tops of them sitting there over the valve guides, and then on this side as well. So when I when I took the um, cylinder head apart, I bagged up and labeled each of the um, intake and exhaust sides for springs, retainers, um, and the um, caps, G 
just to keep everything as it was when it came out. So we're going to start to put these back together and uh, yeah, get on this right now. Okay, so I've just flipped it on its side. I'm going to slide in all of the valves just because they will be retained by the valve um, guides and also the, uh, the seals. Going to lubricate each of the shafts again before it goes in just to make sure everything's very well lubricated on its way in and out of this cylinder head. Oh, here we go. Okay, so uh, valves are all in, and uh, that was uh, another reason um, that I pulled this apart. I actually wanted to make sure the valve stems um, are all nicely lubricated. When I pulled the engine, uh, the cylinder head apart, there actually wasn't a lot of lubrication on anything, if any. Maybe it had evaporated or, or just um, uh, disappeared because of the age of the cylinder head, but make sure everything's lubricated. So. Everything now should be pretty smooth, well seated, lubricated, and uh, we can start to put the springs back on, retainers, and, uh, and start to put the rest of it together. So, we have the springs back in, uh, spring retainers obviously. I've got all the caps off here, and um, I'm about to put the uh, followers on now. So uh, we'll start going through that. Obviously, again, using some, some good lube to make sure that the whole thing is uh, gonna move smoothly and efficiently once we get it all back together. So I'm just going around lubing up the tops of the um, retainers here for the springs. This uh, assembly lube is actually quite stick, not sticky, um, but it, it definitely bonds to the surface, so uh, upon startup or when you uh, start to break in the new engine, it's not going to dissipate, dissipate off the parts too quickly, which is kind of nice. Um, obviously, I don't use too, too much. So that is that. And then we can start to go through, put these followers in place. So the uh, underside on each of these is going to be lubed up, but I am going to make sure that obviously it's clean. Make sure the top surface has a good, and then uh, obviously around the edge, because it does, um, oh, I shouldn't say it does, it could rub against the aluminum uh, cylinder head. Just make sure that that's all nicely lubed up there. Slide it in there. There it goes, into place. Perfect. And again, you always want to you always want to make sure that they're uh, there's not in focus there. Make sure that the surfaces are all clean. There's no damage. These are all the old followers from the old Duratec, um, but still in good shape. So uh, why buy new ones? So, as you can see, all of the followers are in on top of the uh, new springs, uh, if you can see that there. So, made sure, obviously, to lubricate all the way around, lubricate it on top of the uh, retainer for the springs. Uh, I really don't want any friction in there whatsoever, or as, as little as possible. So, um, those are all now seated on the tops of the valves. 
and the tops of the springs. And uh, now it is time to get the um, the camshafts in place. So we're going to lubricate each of the journals for the where the camshafts will sit. There's no bearings specifically. These are um, just cut out of the uh, aluminum. So it is um, important to have it lubricated. The camshafts are steel. Cylinder heads aluminum. Obviously if there's some friction there the shafts will uh, wear away at the aluminum head which can get expensive. So uh, again lubricate as much as possible. Well, obviously each of the journals um, adequately. So we'll do that. So I have two brand new camshafts um, from a Cosworth motor. So I've just lubricated up the uh, areas where they'll sit in the bearing journals and then I've also lubricated each of the lobes that will go on top of the followers and now we're just going to sit it in place. So um, this uh, is the uh, intake uh, camshaft, or sorry, this one's technically the exhaust camshaft. So we're gonna put this in, uh, or no, intake camshaft, intake, put it in the intake side. And then we'll do the same to the exhaust camshaft. So we've got the intake camshaft in place. Now I've just lubed up the exhaust camshaft and we'll put that into place and then we can start putting the uh, uh, top part of the the journals in place. So let's make sure this sits in there nicely. There we go. Well guys, uh, my camera ran out of battery there um, and I was uh, just going through the uh, um, editing of that video and realized I didn't have the last portion of assembling that head. You have to take it from me, I did finish it off. Um, we did check uh, clearances. Um, we made sure everything was obviously well lubricated at the end there. Bolted down those caps that held the uh, camshafts in place and it is now basically ready to install on the engine when it uh, gets assembled. So. Uh, it is now sitting up in the garage, ready to go, and uh, that is the end of the video. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Do feel free to subscribe and follow along with the build. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks again.